Today, we're digging into a question I get all the time. Does honey really help wounds heal, or is that just a myth? By the end of this video, you'll know what honey can actually do for wounds, when to use it, when not to, and how the science stacks up against what you might have heard. Honey seems simple, sweet, natural, harmless, but it turns out it's way more powerful than most people realize. The twist, using it the wrong way can slow healing or do nothing at all. So let's talk about what makes honey so special and what most people get wrong. For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Voltaire, a wound care physician. I've seen wounds that just wouldn't budge until honey was added to the plan. And I've seen wounds get worse when it was used in the wrong setting. That's what this video is about, what honey can do and how to use it responsibly. If you're caring for a wound or supporting someone who is and wondering if natural options like honey are worth trying, this is for you. No fluff, no hype, just real world, science-backed, practical guidance. We'll cover what makes honey medicinal, the difference between raw and medical grade honey, what wounds it helps and what wounds it doesn't, how to apply it safely and effectively. Stick around because near the end, I'll walk you through a powerful case that shows exactly how and when honey can tip the scales. Let's start simple. Why honey? It's been used for thousands of years for wounds, burns, infections. But why? What's in it? Well, honey does a few really cool things. First, it pulls water out of bacteria. That's called osmotic action. Basically, the sugar concentration in honey is so high, it draws fluid out of harmful bacteria, drying them up and slowing their growth. Second, honey produces a small amount of hydrogen peroxide as it interacts with the wound. This acts like a built-in antiseptic, but in a much gentler way than the stuff in your medicine cabinet. Third, certain types of honey, like Manuka honey, contain additional natural compounds, like methyl glyoxal, which gives them extra antimicrobial power. And one more thing, honey keeps wounds moist. It's sticky, it locks in moisture, and that helps healing cells migrate across the wound. So yeah, this is more than folk medicine. It's biochemistry. Here's where people get tripped up. Raw honey from the grocery store is not sterile. That means it could carry bacteria, pollen, or even botulism spores. Not safe for deep wounds, open surgical sites, or anyone who's immunocompromised. Medical grade honey, on the other hand, is sterilized, usually by gamma radiation, so it's safe for clinical use. Examples are products like Meta Honey, Rovamil, and Manuka Wound Gel that are regulated and tested. They come in tubes, dressings, or impregnated gauze. And that's what we use in clinical practice. If you're thinking of honey as medicine, it has to be treated like medicine. So when does it actually work? Honey is especially helpful for pressure injuries, especially stage two or shallow stage three, diabetic foot ulcers, venous ulcers, mildly infected or colonized wounds, superficial burns as well. It helps reduce odor. It helps soften sloth and promotes autolytic debridement as well. And it creates an ideal moist, moist environment for new tissue to grow. There are studies that back this up. A 2015 Cochrane review showed that honey dressings can shorten healing time in partial thickness burns and post-op wounds. A 2022 article in the International Wound Journal noted that honey helped decrease biofilm and speed healing in diabetic foot ulcers. That's powerful stuff. Now here's where we have to be honest. Honey isn't a magic bullet. It doesn't work well for very deep wounds with tunneling, large areas of necrosis needing sharp debridement, wounds with heavy exudate, it gets diluted and loses its effect, full thickness burns, surgical wounds healing by primary intention. It's just not meant to replace stitches. Also, don't mix honey with enzymatic debriders like Santal they can cancel each other out. And if your patient has a bee allergy, avoid it altogether. Let me tell you about Miss J. She was in her 70s and had diabetes. She developed a pressure injury on her tailbone after a long hospital stay. We cleaned it, offloaded it, and started simple dressings, but it lingered and got stuck in that yellow sloppy phase. So we switched to medical grade honey. It was a paste in a tube, and we applied a thin layer directly to the wound bed and covered it with a foam dressing. Within two weeks with debridements, we started seeing granulation. The odor decreased, the wound looked cleaner. Over the next month, it shrunk by 40%. Now, was that just the honey? No. We also adjusted her to nutrition, added compression for her lower leg swelling, and made sure she was turning every two hours. But the honey, 
helped push the wound into gear. Have you ever looked at a wound and wondered, should I be doing more or should I let the body do its thing? Honey sits in that sweet spot, supporting the body without overpowering it. It's gentle, but it's not passive. It's like coaching a team. You're not scoring the goal, but you're setting up the play. Here are a few things I've seen that can derail the plan. Using raw grocery store honey on wounds. Please don't, just don't. Applying too much. Honey works best in a thin, even layer, not a thick glob. Leaving the same dressing on for days. Honey needs to be reapplied regularly, usually every one to two days. Also, using it on the wrong wound type. Deep tunneling wounds, honey can't reach the base. Also, mixing it with incompatible dressings. Some foam dressings absorb too much honey and dry the wound out. Always ask yourself, is this wound clean, shallow, and stuck? Is honey likely to move it forward? Or will it just make a sticky mess? Let's go just a little deeper. A study in the Journal of Wound Care in 2019 showed that Manuka honey reduced bacterial load in chronic wounds by disrupting biofilm. Another 2020 study looked at honey's impact on healing time in diabetic ulcers. Result, on average, wounds healed eight to 12 days faster compared to standard moist wound care. But again, context matters. In wounds with a lot of sloth or moderate exudate, honey alone wasn't enough. It had to be paired with debridement, moisture balance, and good offloading. Remember that image of honey, sweet, golden, and simple? Well, now we know it's also strategic. Used the right way, it supports the body in the most natural, powerful way possible. Not by forcing healing, but by creating the right conditions for it to thrive. And that's the whole game in wound care. Thanks for watching. If you're caring for a wound or want to learn more about tools like silver, hypochlorous acid, or dressings that help the skin around the wound, check out my other videos. And if you want deeper conversations about wound care, join us over at the Wound Fit community. It's a place for clinicians, caregivers, and curious minds. Stay informed and heal well.